good afternoon. Today is the 19th of August and here we are at the Farnborough International Exhibition and Conference Centre for the British Motor Show. Just arrived at uh, the entrance here and uh, it says here that I can go to the classic car zone. That sounds interesting. There's also a select electric motor show, driving experiences and all kinds of other things. Um, might have a little look at the Ford bit a bit later, but I think I th most of you will want to see some classic cars, so we shall head roughly in that direction. Now, with all these uh, things, we're going to have wind noise, we're going to have announcements that interrupt us, we're going to have cars burning rubber on the track, which um, will contribute to unnecessary background noise. Um, I will get information wrong, I might fall over, uh, that's just the way the things go and that's why they're called the slightly shambolic shuffles. If you don't like that kind of thing, well there's not much I can do about that. But uh, I hope that you do enjoy this as we look round the 2021 British Motor Show. Some kind of F1 simulator. Experience for world famous Barcelona circuit on board the F1 W10 EQ Power with Lewis Hamilton. Um, I'm not sure we'll be doing that today, viewers. I think um, we've got other things to do. That's interesting. This is the uh, Vox Vauxhall Young Driver experience um, and a load of courses with uh, Luton plates on them because uh, I think General Motors, well, it was General Motors now. Um, part of Solantis it does have some kind of presence to the Luton. Um, I'm not a young driver anymore, I wish I was, um, but there we go, you pay £25 for 25 minutes and uh, there we go. You can learn to drive right now. Paul Swift's stunt driving experience and Mr Mike Brewer from television, whatever television is, and you can and have your photograph of him just over there. I'm not really sure that I need to do that. I think I'd um, prefer to come and look at some of these things from the Association of um, Central Southern Motor Clubs. Modified pre-facelift. K11 Micro. Interesting. All stripped out. They do, they do race these I have done for absolutely years. That one still seems to have a coloured ref counter in it. It's quite an early one, that. Remember Infinity? Wow. Didn't realise Infinity had um, any kind of racing credentials at all. I, I think this is a G35. I, I don't really know much about Infinity's view. It's, it's just the, uh, the way that it goes in this channel. We sometimes have gaps in our knowledge. However, we do have ooh, free facelift MGZR. Hang on, they never made an MG ZR 170. This must be a 160 that's been modified. And there we are, there's a bit of information about there. Yeah, it must be a bit, a bit modified. ZR 170 specification, so this must be a racing spec at least. It's got the um, facelift um, indicator of wiper stalks in it. Interesting. And those are the those sort of there are the um, fa facelifted um, rear lights. Look a bit like the Toyota Arteza ones. Uh, some kind of Cupra. So see, um, is this like a ferment or is it just some kind of modified lay on? Answers on a postcard. Oh, we're in Nissan Silvia. This looks like an S14 one. Now, I'm very bad on this sort of thing, dear, so if I've got that wrong, please do forgive me but that looks pretty mean it's even got some funny fans in the back oh a saxo absolutely typical kind of rallycross type car it's a facelifted one you know i passed my test in one of these in 2001 it's a it's a facelift one i thought it was I actually reviewed one of these on my channel which i did about two years ago i bet that's uh, got the 1.6 um and you did it for the Peugeot 106 GTI, so it must be a VTS or something. Ooh, 
This is more like it. MG Midget. 71, 72 plate. It's actually 72. Round arch type. Looks uh, fairly standard of there, apart from a gear loop, actually. I bet that's quick. It's probably, it's probably had a more powerful engine put in it than the standard 1275. Yes, it has. It's uh, had a K-series put in it from um, an MG TF135. I imagine that'd be quite fast then. Uh, some kind of modified Mini. Don't ask me to tell you what type that is, because I don't know. Ooh, auto test. That'd be fun on that. So we're not going to go into this bit, viewers, but uh, this is the Dream Ride section supporting... Uh, the Sporting Bears Motor Club, and let's just have a look and see if there's anything interesting in here. Well, certainly is, viewers. It's got a Vice Man. Ferrari F430, I think that is. I'm very bad on supercars, viewers. But it's not, that's not why people watch my channel anyway. However, I see we can get a, a little bit more of a look at this Daimler SP250 Dart. Oh, and look who's here as well. <laughs> Yes, yes, he's here. I wonder if he's going to be sort of burning up a track in a Triumph Stag. So that little Chevrolet Camaro there, or the uh, Dame Rust P250 Dart. I'm afraid I don't think I'll be finding out today, viewers, because I, I haven't got any extra money for this sort of thing. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go and find some more classic cars. Actually, I probably need to cover these electrified brand new Fords before I head in there because I, I just don't know actually when I'm going to get a chance to come back here. It might not happen. So, first thing is the Transit Custom Nugget. These, these camper vans are expensive, you know, the uh, Foxhorn California is expensive as well. So, it's the uh, Mercedes Marco Polo. Plug-in, Transit Custom, wow. It's a one litre plug-in hybrid, one litre engine in a van this size. I've driven quite a few of these actually, viewed. there's a walk around of, uh, uh, I think it was a 2018 or 2019 model, but I did it on my channel a couple of years ago when we were moving house. It's interesting to see that, let's just see where it in. It's a normal fuel flap. I'm just wondering where you plug in. Oh, you plug it in just there. Uh, Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid. This has been out. Of, this has been out a couple of years now. This one. ST Line X, um, 2.5 PHEV CVT. So the Mackie. It's the first time I've actually seen one of these in real life. Well, it's fifty-eight thousand pounds. This particular one we really are in pleasant territory or something like this. What on earth is that? Some kind of some kind of camera system for getting in. The boot looks quite big. I hope I don't get a copyright match on this one. That music view is that's uh, not my favourite. Puma mild hybrid, of course. With these, I saw one of these first a long time ago with the. Um, um, there we are, that's, a, that's, a, the, that's a, the pièce de résistance, the, the boot that you can fill with water and then pull the plug out. Very big boot, I think it's 455 litres on one of these. Very big selling car at the moment, these, um, these Pumas. I just sold the, the Fiesta last month actually in this country. Another Marquis, it's a little bit cheaper this one. This is the... That's a bit confusing. It's 88 stroke 98 kilowatt hour. Extended in range, okay. Another one here. Ooh, and the full, the full hybrid. The standard hybrid, as opposed to the silly name that people use, the self charging hybrid. I think that's a silly, silly name for them, but that's just me. There we go. 
the fifth generation of Vestmax has been around for quite a long time now. I actually sourced um, the Galaxy, which is virtually the same car as one of these, for a client a while ago, but it was, a, I think, a 65 plate one. It doesn't actually look that different. Obviously, it's got the hybrid powertrain in it, um, but that has put the price up. Well, I think the one that I sourced uh, new would have been about £25,000. This is about £41,000. So, yeah. I didn't even say what, uh, yeah, it's the same powertrain really as uh, the um, Cougar, but not with a plug-in hybrid element on it. It's one of the last cars of this type that actually have sale in this country. It's, it's amazing, they've all gone pretty much now. The main rivals to this were the uh, Alhambra and the um, Sharan, and they've gone now. Interesting. Hey okay, viewers, let's uh, go in here. There is a National Automotive Industry Day, but I don't think I'm actually big enough as a member of the press to go in. So we'll go this way instead. See what we find in here. Test road registration. Vehicles available Ford, Sanyong, Alpine, Volkswagen, Mercedes, Caterham and Skoda. We might have a go at that later, but I don't know if I'll have time. Porsche, this is a Taycan. certainly is and then um, here is a Yanni Mice competition oh yes we know we know Yanni we know him. there's quite a few manufacturers in there we'll take a look at that later there's some Ferraris here but I don't think we're particularly going to be concentrating too much on this sort of stuff sort of here because it's not really what the channel's about so we shall go over here and see what we can find. The City Car Zone. Suki Ignis, I actually got a review of one of these on the channel, funnily enough. Volkswagen Up GTI. MG3, this is a, actually what I, dro what I drove to the show here today. I drove in an MG3, which is, uh, which is interesting. This is uh, Southwark Silver, this colour's called. Renault Zoe. Uh, Renault UK plates on this one. Interesting, I, I thought Nissan always had their press cars on O plates. This is the one with V. Oh, well. It's interesting, it's a 69 plate, so it's 18 months old or so, this one. Smart 4.4, this is the new one. It looks like these cars have been bought off some kind of uh, press feed, I think, uh, but Auto Express have uh, been uh, there. Citroen C1. The Sanjuke. New one again, this is a very early one. There we go, it's got no plate on it. Uh, Fiat 500 hybrid. It's amazing. This design has been going since 2007. Is this called the Hey Google model? Fiat 500 mild hybrid Hey Google. It's an interesting name for a car. Ah, the new Honda Jazz. There's a review of one of these on the. Um, Planet Auto channel. I've actually left the boot open of this one for some reason. But you can actually open the door. This is a bit like it used to be back in the uh, the old days with the motor shows, where you could actually kind of get in and sort of look at things. It's a mild hybrid as well, but we couldn't advertise it too much. BMW 4 Series Coupe. I really like this colour view. It's, oh my gosh. Is this dark green in a beige leather interior? It is dark green in a beige leather interior. Ooh. Oh, I like, I like that colour scheme. I don't know about the car particularly, but I do like the colour scheme. Yeah, it's an M440 with a forbidden fuel engine. You better uh, just to move away from it. And we got uh, to Toyota GR Yaris, four-wheel drive. This is the... This is the one that everyone's talking about. 
Toyota press plates, of course, on this one. It does actually look quite appealing. I, I think it actually, it actually, the colour really stands out far more on camera than it is in real life, funnily enough. Volkswagen ID3, we'll just pass my back because we've actually had one of those on the channel, full review. Um, the Lexus. I always forget what these are called. We'll have to have a look at the back, viewers. That's what we'll do. We'll have a look at the back. It's LC500. I think that's a Wonder V8 engine. BMW i3, kind of also one of these recently, but I had one of these on my channel back in 2018. And they're actually still selling it. I think that's quite interesting. Of course, Planet Auto had one of these recently too. Skoda Octavia, it's a VRS version. It looks so much brighter actually on. Um, <laughs> the video it does in real life, it's quite astonishing. Yep, so we have VRS. Don't know whether that's actually from. Uh, it's from Price Office, I don't know whether that's the petrol forbidden fuel one. Uh, Seat have brought their cars along with the Cooper ones that aren't Seats, but they kind of are. Um, New Ibiza, Arona. Is this a plug in? Lane or something because it does have some quite strange alloy wheels in it which looked like it might be an eco one yes it is it's an excellent slux top of the range with plug-in hybrid powertrain 36,000 pounds this is the Cupra Leon I believe as well this is the extremely sporty version yes Cupra Leon it's actually not that different in price it's a couple of thousand more Cupra Fermento I know actually uh, the Macklin's Motors channel had one of these recently. And I think it was a plug-in hybrid one like this. For, for about £38,000. Let's have a look and see if this has got a nice big boot in it. Yes, it has. It's not bad. Cooper Ateca, this is the facelifted one, I believe. For what it is, actually, that's not particularly expensive, always someone who actually got a proper camera sort of in there, who um, is actually doing sort of proper filming as opposed to shambolic shuffling. Um, yes, 40,350 40, pounds. Renault Arcana, now this is something I've not actually seen, I've not seen one of these before. Sort of like a sort of five door coupe type thing. Um, but it's a lot cheaper than all the others are. It's much, much, much <laughs> cheaper than, say, I don't know, a BMW X6. Renault Capture. The new Renault Clio. Can find auto have one of those on the channel. Well, Dutchies are here as well. Let's uh, have a look at some Dutchies viewers, including the Sandero Stepway. There we go. I don't know about this colour, I'm not too sure about that, but, you know, there we go. I think the uh, one bit you'll want to be wanting to see more of that is the standard, standard uh, Sandero, which is this one. Which model is this? It tells me the price, it's about, oh, the Comfort TCE. 100 by fuel, like the only manufacturer who, who is still offering LPG standard factory conversions. It's a lot smarter looking than the previous model, it's much smarter looking. I don't think you need the key to open the boot, it's still got an enormous fuel flat, mate. that's absolutely enormous. Imagine you pop the boot up somewhere. It's 21 plate. Duster, of course. This came out a couple of years ago now. It's um, still on the sort of older platform that a lot of Dacia models were based on for a long time. Uh, this will probably be a top of the range one as well. It's a privilege. Um, the colour is called Desert Orange. It starts at £12,000. It's still 
a bit cheaper than um, Tony on Tivoli then. Right, unfortunately, as we get closer to uh, where there's some sort of talking arena going on, the sound is going to get worse. I do apologise for that, viewers. Uh, there is a defender from the Jaguar Land Rover section now. Uh, what is this? Range Rover Sports. I'm going to go quite quickly through some of these cars for you because I, I don't think that most of you have been trying to sit in some of these, but we will cover them because every, every model is of its fans. I do like this Jaguar F Type, that's very nice. I, mean, I, I need a dark green one and a beige leather interior, but you know, what's who's surprised by that? What model is this one? Is this the one with the V8 engine or something? F-Type Special 5, 5 litre V8, the Ram edition. That's actually how you say it. It's Ram, not Reed. It's Ram. £73,000. Jaguar I Pace. These things are absolutely, utterly massive. Just massive. Absolutely crazy. I think this is an E Pace as well. So this is a. This is a big, big boy, this one. Gosh, that is big. This is a P400E, it's a plug-in hybrid version. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. Lots of space in there, isn't there? Luxury leather kit. I do like the luxury leather kit, means. Luma design, um, modified Land Rovers. Big defender, big defender. This one, big five door thing. I wonder what powertrain's in this. It's probably forbidden fuel, in which case we can't talk about it on the channel. Oh, it's no, no, it's not. It's a P300. It's uh, it's petrol. Brilliant. That's what we like to see, viewers. I much prefer that, but I can actually talk about it on the channel. Right, let's go over to the Sanyong area over there. Sadly, uh, this Rexon here, the new one that Planet Auto had in my channel recently, um, it's got the forbidden fuel engine in it, so we can't actually talk about it. Uh, likewise, this is, I think, the new facelifted Musa. I'm going to get a video for this for the Planet Auto channel, if this is the new one. Yeah, that's the new one. Look at that front end. And the new... The new Tivoli. Now we can talk about this. They've even stuck a wooden fuel engine in it. Ah, oh, excellent. Same one I drove. The 1.5 Ultimate Automatic. Top of the range of these. Hmm. Yes. We've got a full review of bodies on the channel anyway, so no need to sort of talk too much about it. But that back end does look quite different from the one that we have. And a Corando Ultimate. I hope this has got a petrol engine in it, viewers. Oh no, it hasn't. Right, well we'll have to uh, we'll have to go elsewhere then. Can't talk about those. So we have the uh, TIG one here. Recently had uh, the previous TIG one um, on my channel. Then the GTX version of the ID4. This is the GTI sporty thing that they have. Oh, it's only £712 a month. That appears to be a bit expensive. Mind you, it's a bit more affordable if you look down there for the arrangements. And the T Rock Cabriolet, it's one of the only Cabriolets actually currently on the market. Unbelievably. I mean, like, I don't know, I kind of like the look of that. I'm not, I don't know why. It's weird. I mean, I am a bit weird. What, um, what stand is this? I was set a set stand themselves. Well, we don't really need to look at that too much because I've spotted something that I think might be actually a bit, a bit more sort of um, exciting for you. The new Outback. It's actually got an electric tailgate. I think Subaru has now followed a lot of manufacturers and has gone entirely uh, petrol stroke hybrid. I don't think they have forbidden fuel engines anymore. 
there we go, yes, exactly, boxer engine. And this is the XV. These are the only two models that are sold in this country at the moment for Subarus, the XV and, um, and the Outback. This one starts at about £31,500, so it's got the uh, some hybrid version. I think, yeah, the XV, e-boxer. I think um, Planet Auto have got uh, videos on these cars if you want to see them. But as for me, I'm going to continue to another part of the show because we're running out of time for this first part now. Ooh. Sierra RS Cosworth Hatch. What's this? The uh, car crowd. You can own a share of a, mm, a lovely car like this. That's not bad, I like that. How about a spiker as well? I think I prefer the Sierra to the Spiker, but maybe some of you don't, maybe some of you are much into them. Ooh, I think we found the right bit of the show to be in. Do you know what, viewers? I think we'll leave this first part here because we've discovered um, the classic section. I said we're, I was hinting that we were going to find it, and I think we have. So we better put this in a different part. Thank you ever so much indeed for watching this slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2021 British Motor Show. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future parts. Like this video and leave a comment below. It very much uh, helps us out. Social media links are down below. Thank you once again.